SCP-1739 Obsolete Laptop If you are about to die, but you could press a button that would instead kill a random person you've never met, chances are you would push it. This is of course an ethical dilemma, and although most of the time in the SCP universe, the Foundation tends to gloss over ethical issues for the sake of the greater good, sometimes SCPs are focused on them. Today we'll be looking at an SCP that seems rather benign at first, but eventually we, along with the Foundation, will see how serious it is, and what an ethical dilemma it presents. SCP-1739 is, as the name suggests, a Dell Latitude D800 laptop, a model made during the mid-2000s. 1739 spontaneously appeared in Foundation containment on January 1, 2004. As is standard for many SCPs, 1739 is seemingly impervious to all damage, but more notably is a program located on its hard drive titled gofetch.exe. Upon opening this file, three separate applications open, one being an input field requesting a date and time, two being a chat client, and three being a computer-generated animation. The input field requests a time and date, but it must be inputted in Unix timestamp format, meaning a number of seconds that have passed since January 1st, 1970. The accepted range of times and dates is limited, however, and only a time after January 1st, 2004 and before the current time will be accepted. If a time is entered between those two dates, the individual that entered the time will suddenly disappear. The chat client is used to communicate with someone in a parallel universe, who always utilizes the handle Isaac, followed by a number. Isaac only connects to the chat client after someone disappears from entering in a time, and they claim that they are working for the SCP Foundation in a divergent timeline. The timelines and universes are identical up until the point that the person in our timeline disappeared and suddenly appeared in theirs. Essentially, the laptop is capable of sending individuals back in time with limited range and suddenly creates a new timeline because of it. The third application, the computer-generated animation, shows a dog chained to a doghouse. After a time is entered in the first application, the animation changes to show a woman unleashing the dog and throwing a ball off-screen. The dog proceeds to chase after the ball and is no longer in sight. After a period of time ranging from only three days or up to seven months, Isaac suddenly disconnects from the chat client. When they do so, the animation shows the dog returning to the doghouse with the ball in its mouth, now deflated. The dog discards the chewed ball off screen, and the woman chains the dog back up. At this point, everything is back to the way it started, and won't change until a new time is inputted in the first application. So, what does all this really mean? As usual, we find the full story in the logs, as a researcher communicates with a couple different versions of Isaac using the chat client. In one branched timeline, created by sending a D-class back in time only five seconds, Isaac67 discusses why the chat client always disconnects at a certain point. They rule it out being some sort of problem with the laptop, and later, he tells the researcher that the reason the chat client disconnects is because their universe is destroyed. Whatever the reason, the change in the timeline caused by the sudden appearance of an individual sent back in time causes the divergent universe to be destroyed. He speculates that the laptop is possibly meant to put people onto a sinking ship, so to speak, and he disconnects soon afterwards suggesting his universe was indeed destroyed. Later, another timeline is created, and a new Isaac discusses 1739 and what it exactly does. 
Much of the dialogue here suggests that the researcher in our universe is communicating with himself in the other universe. This Isaac says that the sinking ship analogy is wrong, and that 1739 is actually responsible for the destruction of the alternate universe, in a way. Basically, there's an entity, unimaginable, incomprehensible, and malevolent, that is capable of consuming universes, or otherwise destroying them. It can travel through time and space, and constantly hungers for new universes to devour. Fortunately, this entity is currently contained by 1739. This is represented by the computer animation. The dog is the entity, and most of the time it is chained up, unable to roam free. When a new date is entered and someone is sent back into the past to create a new universe, the dog is let off of the chain so that it can satiate itself by consuming the universe, in this case, represented as a ball. It returns to the doghouse and is put back on the chain. This is a solution, but hardly a perfect one. It's speculated that if the entity isn't given fresh universes to devour, it will eventually break free from the chain itself, and that would definitely be a problem. So, just keep making branching timelines using D-Class, and the entity will stay content and contained, right? Well, yes and no. In theory, that will work as a continual containment procedure, and the Foundation could keep throwing D-Class at it, accepting the ethical dilemma of sacrificing other universes to save our own. But the problem is that the Foundation in our timeline can never be sure when they send someone back if they're in the Prime Timeline or in the Branching Timeline. Basically, every time the Foundation uses the laptop, they run the risk of becoming the Branched Timeline themselves, and thus their timeline and universe will be destroyed. Because of this, the Foundation has set up Operation Smokescreen to prevent 1739 from depositing any future travelers into our universe, and all experiments with 1739 involving sending people to the past have been ceased. I've often said that many SCPs are interesting, not because of the questions that they answer, but instead the questions they ask. Who exactly made the laptop, and why did they give it to our universe? How does the chat client work, allowing us to communicate with other timelines? And more importantly, why did the person who made the laptop want us to be able to speak to a doomed universe? What exactly would happen if the entity broke free from its chain? And is it really being satiated forever by sacrificial universes? 1739 is a two-fold problem for the Foundation now, as they would definitely be willing to sacrifice alternate universes to save their own, but they're left with a faulty containment procedure that could doom them, with no current way to solve the problem. There are many SCPs now that threaten all life on the planet or in the universe, from cosmic deer to unimaginable horrors, but SCP-1739 is a fun one, because on the surface it seems so harmless. It's often a very effective horror trope to take something mundane and inoffensive, such as a computer animation of a dog, and turn it into something horrific. I said at the start that you'd probably push that button to kill a random person instead of yourself, but if that button also had a chance to destroy the universe, you might hesitate. 